my name's Ken Greaves. I'm a chartered psychologist and scientist. Um, I've worked as a specialist psychologist in the field of educational psychology for approximately, oh gosh, 20 odd years, 22 years, um, seems such a long time ago. Um, initially trained as a generic psychologist, um, but developed a specialism for my passion, which is autism, and associated neurodiverse conditions, um, which include attention deficit hyperactive disorder, dyslexia, and dyspraxia. Um, what I do now is that I actually work um, with a range of individuals of a range of ages. So I will work with babies right up to geriatrics across a range of settings. So I work in education uh, as a senior specialist psychologist and I work in further and higher establishments for, um, as a consultant specialist. I work for corporate organizations as a, a specialist assessor um, and I work for the National Autistic Society as one of their consultants having trained under the auspices of the Long Wing uh, Centre as part of their diagnostic team, which really brought me out into working with, in, with, in the field of autism. Um, what I can offer, um, I can offer that range of expertise and knowledge. Um, I've worked um, with individuals, with um, families, with groups, with organisations. I work at a national level. Um, and certainly I have been able to provide support and advice which enables um, situations to move forward. The way that I work with regards to assessment is, uh, is based on a holistic way of seeing the needs of the individual and I try to move away from what we consider to be a within person deficit model. In other words, that it's the person that has the problem. Um, I feel that it's also a combination of the environment and how the individual's needs and the environment come together. So I suppose what I'd be promoting is what we class as a social model of disability. So in effect, my assessment involves <clears throat> working with the individual, uh, assessing the context in which the individual is developing, and providing support and advice in consultation with other relevant agencies and professionals that are working with that individual. Autism is a um, condition which um, it's comprised of three key areas um, that these individuals ex experience. Difficulties in their ability to commun communicate socially, um, so um, how they interact from the point of view of um, big groups, understanding what, how to behave in groups, how to work out what's, what, what's appropriate to do and, and, and display behaviours that are considered to be typical of others. Another area is communication, I think, um, but from the point of view of understanding the social nuances of what we say and what we mean. Uh, they may well have the structure to understand literally what's being said, but they find it very difficult to understand the social nuances, such as pull yourself together or pull your socks up or this, it's raining cats and dogs. They may f literally take that as an experience that's occurring, which makes their ability to understand language very confusing. They also have difficulty in interpreting non-verbal -verb cues, so uh, body language. So eye contact may be an area of particular difficulty with them, particularly if the person is talking, because they're trying to make sense of what, the person, what they see from that person, and also try to ascertain what the person is actually saying. So it becomes very, very confusion confusing for them to kind of read body language and what's being said. So they tend to turn away to, so that they can focus on what's actually being said. Now this is perceived by the, the other person as being rude and so it can set up an interaction that's very confusing and which can have wider ramifications. The final area is social imagination in that um, the, the individuals tend to have imagination with regards to doing things that are very able, you know, they have fantastic um, interests like the stars, dinosaurs, trains, so on and so forth. They can talk at length and really show excellent kind of a, a knowledge and understanding. But what they lose is the ability to socially imagine what, what's going on, to work out, you know, that we, we, we do things together and I can understand from you what you're doing, you can understand from me. And so we have a problem because we don't get to each other because my social imagination of you is, is very limited. So issues to do with empathy, seeing things from a, another person's perspective is quite, quite difficult for them. Associated with these key core areas, we call this the triad of impairment, there are 
difficulties in motor processing, so it's not, not uncommon for this particular group to have some difficulties with being, being perceived as being clumsy. They have awkward gaits, they walk strangely, and they have problems with regards to how they record. Um, other difficulties which we class as comorbidities are attention deficit issues. It's not uncommon for a person with autism to have a condition known as attention deficit hyperactive disorder or attention deficit disorder or indeed specific learning difficulties. So I suppose what I, I would say is that there's not the purest conditions such as autism, it's kind of linked in to other conditions as well. And that's where the conceptualization of neurodiverse uh, issues come into play. Um, I try and move away from disorders because I'm very much a person that's a proponent of conditions. So I would class individuals that are having an autistic spectrum condition. Um, the autistic spectrum condition is a spectrum. So we can have those at one end that have quite complex learning difficulties towards the severe learning difficulties end, so they're very limited in their understanding cognitively in order to make sense of their world, so they become quite isolated. To those that are highly able and very talented and have the ability to develop sophisticated strategies to deal with the social site, social environment that they live with. Um, and I work with Cambridge University students, who some of whom are on that, on that side. So they are incredibly intelligent, they are fantastic with regards to their, their topic and their subject, but they are very socially um, inadequate with regards to their ability to deal with social situations. And, the term the eccentric professor immediately springs to mind because they're out there and they're like that and I love working with them um, and as part of that I've developed my own consultancy which works with those highly able individuals who are out there doing an extremely good job in the workplace but are having a very difficult time dealing with the social aspects of their of their, of their lives. I work extensively with neurodiverse families um, and certainly for my premise as a a black psychologist, I realised at the outset that, that the issue to do with autism wasn't necessarily an, an area that culturally diverse families were actually having acknowledged within their, within their um, areas of need. Um, and certainly I became involved in this particular area of working with adults in recognition that um, some adults have been diagnosed inappropriately. In other words, they would have been diagnosed as having a behaviour issue and mental health problems as a consequence of that, and they would have gone along the psychiatric route, whereupon, on closer inspection, they have a condition known as autism, and unfortunately, their needs have not been addressed, and that has, has, has led to quite significant and dire consequences for those individuals and indeed their families. I think the contribution I've made has been, has been to challenge that in all facets from the point of view of the work base in which these individuals are, uh, find themselves in mental health institutions uh, legally because some of them come up uh, on charges that they don't understand with regards to how they perceive the social situation and also educationally because they've been not necessarily had the opportunity to develop their skills uh, in a fairly, at times, rigid structure um, that's formalised and that doesn't recognise their skills and their qualities. Another area that I'd kind of like to... I think I'd like to sign up as a, as a kind of um, a real achievement is that I've worked um, in many corporate organisations, such as Shell, such as um, government bodies, which I can't particularly name, where they've asked me to do assessments of adults and to provide support and advice to... Uh, with regards to their work-based issues. And so that's been quite rewarding because it means that I've been out there um, in other settings, um, uh, providing the knowledge and expertise that I can offer to that particular context. Um, I'm very much a, a proponent, as I've mentioned before, of multidisciplinary working. And so I work very closely with a range of therapists and part of my consultancy is actually developing that. So that if, if as a referral has come to me, I can actually work with a network of true and trusted professionals that can provide the appropriate support and advice to enable that individual to go forward in whatever setting they find themselves. A recent case study in mine was a parent who has a, ch a child in an independent school was concerned about her child's well-being, um, particularly that he wasn't um, faring very well in the school environment. In other words, he was showing extremely high levels of anxiety, becoming very stressed and quite depressed about going to school. Um, he struggled with certain aspects of the curriculum and the staff were expressing their concerns as to whether he was learning uh, appropriately and they linked his learning to his, the social aspects of learning. In other words, he was finding it very difficult to work in groups, to communicate effectively and tended to shy away from any 
um, situations which involve interacting with peers. Um, so he, he was a very lonely and quite depressed uh, young child, actually, when, I, when mother contacted me. Um, they were looking for some kind of recognition that he had an autistic spectrum condition. Um, so I consulted with mother regarding the developmental history, i.e. how he was as a child, what sort of issues that she expressed, experienced with him with regards to his ability to interact and communicate and play with others. Um, there were issues there. There were issues with regards to his early developmental milestones from the point of view of he had some mobility issues as well as sen sensory issues. In other words, he was very sensitive to loud noises and very, felt very uh, claustrophobic in crowded places. So with the assessment, I was able to kind of say, yes, I think that this person has an autistic spectrum condition and that the condition is um, along the lines of Asperger's syndrome. I drafted a report um, and mother was very pleased with the report and it was agreed that she present that report to the school in order to for them to consider and as part of the report I made specific recommendations as to pathways for that young child and one of the pathways that I suggested was training for the school uh, uh, in, in line with what, what is autism what is Asperger syndrome and how does it impact on this on this child and what strategies that the school needed to consider in order to make the child's experience of learning a, a, a positive one. Um, and I, the, the, the sum of that was that I did do the training at the school, they appreciated my training, and they've asked me back to, to do more development work with, them, with other children that they have. I'm also involved now in monitoring the progress of that particular child that I was initially involved with, and the school is looking to develop a parental support network in order to ensure that other parents that have experienced similar difficulties can come together and I can act as a consultant to support them alongside supporting the school and indeed the individuals. So um, I see that as a, you know, a very a, a successful way of working. Um, as, as I've mentioned earlier, my, my assessment is very much about intervention. It's about what does the assessment say? I may not necessarily be a diagnostically led practitioner, but if it has to be made, it will be made in the best interest of the child and the family. And so if it's more about what can we do? What's out there? How can we promote the issues in a constructive and positive and non-judgmental way? I do pride myself on working as a critical friend as opposed to being someone that's kind of... Um, adverse to what's being said, which has been parents' experiences for local authorities and independent schools, to be quite honest with you, that they've, they've expressed their concerns and, and the, the local authority have said, no, this is not, we don't agree with you, we, 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 our assessments are not showing this. I think um, as a psychologist, working with autism encapsulates all the skills that you have. Um, it, they, you need to be able to work objectively, you need to understand and challenge yourself with regards to uh, equal opportunities, you need to consider that this condition manifests itself in all all cultures. It's a div diverse issue that you really need, need to respect. Um, I work with a range of learning capacities from the severe to the highly able. I work with developmental ages and stages. I work in different contexts and for me to be able to make a contribution to enable an individual that has the condition who has been misdiagnosed or misconstrued or to help their families make sense of their their son or feel that they've been heard gives me tremendous satisfaction. Um, and um, and I think the more, my, my having been in this profession for 20 odd years, the more I learn about autism, the more confused I get.